This video will provide an overview of the ClinGen Gene Disease Validity Scoring System. The Clinical Genome Resource, or ClinGen, is an NIH-funded entity dedicated to building a publicly available genomic knowledge base of curated information in an effort to improve patient care through genomic medicine. ClinGen will utilize genomic and health data shared by patients, clinicians, researchers, and laboratories to answer critical questions about genes, genetic changes, and human health. Results of curation activities to answer these questions will be provided back to the public through our own website, www.clinicalgenome.org, NCBI's ClinVar, and other resources. A critical component in building this genomic knowledge base is the evaluation of evidence implicating a gene in human disease or the clinical validity of a gene disease pair. The clinical validity of a genetic test is the ability to accurately detect the correct disorder presenting in the individual being tested. Accurately diagnosing the disorder requires correctly identifying the causative variant within the appropriate gene. Thus, one must consider the clinical relevance of the variant and the gene itself. How strong is the evidence that variation in that gene causes the disease in question? As one of its goals, the ClinGen Gene Curation Working Group has developed a framework to standardize the approach to determine the clinical validity for a gene disease pair. This framework defines the criteria needed to assess clinical validity, quantifies the evidence supporting a gene disease association, and allows curators to use this information to methodically classify the validity of a given gene disease pair. This framework is currently optimized for genes associated with monogenic disorders. It is distinct from and not meant to be suitable for the well-established statistical thresholds used for genome-wide association studies or validated methods to define multifactorial disease risk. Future iterations will expand the framework to consider the evaluation of oligogenic or multifactorial conditions. The original framework was described in a 2017 publication in the American Journal of Human Genetics, PMID 28552198, and in a detailed standard operating procedures document, which is updated periodically and available on our website. An overview of the ClinGen gene disease validity classification shown here is provided in a separate video. These are published in the 2017 article in the American Journal of Human Genetics and are also available on our website. This video will provide an overview on how to assess genetic and experimental evidence and how to use the ClinGen scoring metric to guide you toward a preliminary gene disease classification. We have developed a scoring matrix to make the process of arriving at a classification more transparent. The scoring matrix focuses primarily on genetic and experimental evidence. For our purposes, genetic evidence refers to case level, family segregation, or case control data that supports the gene disease association. And experimental evidence refers to gene level functional evidence supporting disease causality. The idea of replication over time serves as a differentiator between the strong and definitive categories. This criteria is met if there are at least two independent clinical publications supporting the gene disease association and no valid contradictory information reported over at least a three-year period. The presence or absence of compelling contradictory evidence is also recorded. It is difficult to quantify the types of evidence that could contradict a gene disease relationship. It will likely be unique for each gene disease pair. For this reason, we have opted not to attempt to score contradictory evidence. If this type of evidence is present, the gene disease pair receives a preliminary classification of conflicting evidence reported. Expert review is highly encouraged to determine if it should be disputed or refuted, given the weight of this particular evidence compared to current understanding of this gene disease relationship. Please note that these point values are intended to facilitate a preliminary assessment of a gene disease association. Either the initial curator or expert reviewer may provide a specific rationale for an alternate classification that would supersede the provisional classification. This approach provides a transparent method for curators to summarize and assess all curated evidence for a gene disease pair and encourages consistency between curators with differing levels of expertise.
We will go through each piece one by one, but this is the entire genetic evidence scoring system. The system accounts for both case level and case control data. For the case level module, we provide a suggested default number of points for each category of evidence, as well as a range. This allows users to adjust the score as appropriate given the specific details of any given case. For case control studies, only a range is provided. The curator is encouraged to carefully evaluate the quality of the study and consult with domain experts to determine the appropriate number of points to assign any one case control study. Each type of evidence is also given a maximum number of points that can be carried over to the gene disease validity scoring matrix. The total number of genetic evidence points allowable is 12. We'll start by reviewing the case level data scoring. When we refer to case level data, we are referring to those studies that describe individuals or families with variation in the gene of interest, such as case studies or case series. Each case may be given points for the variant observed and any segregation evidence that may be present. This allows cases with more convincing evidence to score higher than cases with less convincing evidence. For example, a loss of function variant segregating in several generations of a family may result in more points than a missense variant in an individual with no additional family information. When evaluating case level variant evidence, consider only those variants that are plausible causes for disease. For example, variants that are observed at frequencies in the general population too high to be consistent with disease should not be awarded points in this system. Variants that are otherwise considered plausible causes for disease may be given a baseline number of points based on variant type. Predicted or proven null variants should generally start at 1.5 points, and other variant types, for example, missense, should start at 0.1 points. Points may be upgraded by the default amount of points listed in the table if functional data is available to support the variance effect on the underlying protein and or the variant is de novo. Note that each GSEP may specify other upgrades or downgrades that may be appropriate. Always check with your GSEP regarding final variant scoring. When evaluating biallelic variants in the context of autosomal recessive disease, evaluate each observed variant in trans independently, then sum for the final score. Always round to the nearest 0.5, except when you have biallelic missense variants without supportive functional data. In this case, round to the final score of 0.25. Note that no single proband may score more than three points. Let's walk through a few examples. If we are evaluating an autosomal dominant or X-linked disease, the following scenarios apply. If your variant is a missense variant, it would start at a baseline of 0.1 points. According to the table, if supportive functional data were available, you would add 0.4 points to your baseline and the resulting score would be 0.5. Similar situation if your missense variant was de novo, you could add an additional 0.4 points, bringing the total you would document in the GCI to 0.5. If you happen to have both, your missense variant did have supportive functional data and was also found to be de novo. You would sum the baseline score and both upgrades. After rounding to the nearest 0.5, your final score would be one point. For loss of function variants, the baseline score is, in general, 1.5 points, provided loss of function is the mechanism for disease. If there was functional evidence demonstrating that a presumed loss of function variant was actually resulting in loss of protein product, an upgrade of 0.5 points would be warranted. If the variant was found to be de novo, a 0.5 point upgrade may also be warranted. Again, if you happen to have both, your loss of function variant did have supportive functional evidence and was de novo, you would sum the baseline score and both upgrades and your final score would be 2.5 points. When evaluating biallelic variants in the context of an autosomal recessive disease, remember that each variant should be evaluated separately using the scoring considerations we just discussed and the two variants should be summed to come up with the final score. For example, if variant 1 was a missense variant without functional data and variant 2 was a de novo loss of function variant, 
you would first evaluate variant 1 at 0 0.1 points, then evaluate variant 2 at 2 points, then sum to 2.1 points. Round down to the nearest 0 0.5, in this case 2 points, and enter this information into the GCI. Here is another autosomal recessive example. Imagine variant 1 is a missense variant with functional data. This would be worth 0 0.5 points. Next, imagine variant 2, which is a de novo missense variant. This would also be worth 0 0.5 points. In total, the sum for this particular proband would be 1 point. One last scoring example. Say variant 1 was a loss of function variant with supportive functional data, and variant 2 is a de novo loss of function variant. Each variant represents a baseline putative loss of function variant with at least one common upgrade, functional data at 0 0.5 points, and de novo data at 0 0.5 points. Given this, the summed score for the variance observed in trans is 4 points. However, at the beginning, we stated that no single proband could contribute more than three points. Because of this, the number of points will be capped, and the final score that should be entered into the GCI is three points. There are a few caveats to keep in mind when scoring case-level variant evidence. First, the default scores per variant assume that the variant in question is consistent with the expected disease mechanism. If this is not the case, consider downgrading or not scoring. For example, if you are evaluating a disease where the known mechanism is gain of function, consider not scoring null variants and upgrading gain of function missense variants. Always document reasons for alternative scoring in the GCI. Also remember that variants may be up or downgraded beyond the value suggested here, but within the scoring range, based on the strength of your particular piece of evidence. For example, a missense variant may be given up to 1.5 points if the GSET feels that supportive functional evidence is particularly robust and or convincing that the variant is causative for disease. Again, always check with your GSEP regarding final variant scoring. Along those same lines, variants may be up or downgraded for reasons other than those specified in the scoring table at the discretion of the GSEP. For example, a GSEP may decide to upgrade missense variants if they are located within a known functional domain or a GSEP may choose to downgrade variants observed in the setting of a nonspecific, genetically heterogeneous phenotype, such as autism, in probands with limited previous testing for other possible genetic etiologies. Additionally, when assigning points for de novo status, consider further upgrades if statistical evidence shows that de novo variation in a particular gene is rare. Use caution and consider either not upgrading or not scoring if a gene is known to have a high rate of de novo variation, such as the Titan gene. Some GSEPs have found it helpful to document these types of context-specific upgrades or downgrades to encourage consistency among their members, so check if documentation like this is available for your GSEP. Always document the reasons for upgrading and downgrading a particular variant in the GCI. We have opted to categorize segregation evidence by LOD scores. LOD scores provided by authors can be used here. If a LOD score is not provided, one can be estimated for reasonably penetrant Mendelian disorders across multiple families by counting the number of times a variant segregates with affected individuals excluding the proband in a family. Instructions for a simplified LOD score calculation can be found in the Gene Curation Standard Operating Procedures document, or SOP, available on our website. For dominant or X-linked disorders, the estimated LOD score should be calculated using only families with four or more segregations present. For recessive disorders, the estimated LOD score should be calculated using only families with at least three affected individuals. Sum the LOD scores from all families meeting the inclusion criteria described in the SOP and use this total LOD score to assign points. More points should be awarded if the variants were identified using genome-wide approaches such as whole exome or whole genome sequencing. Fewer points should be awarded if variants were identified using a candidate gene sequencing approach. The maximum number of points attributable to segregation evidence is three. 
When we refer to case-controlled data for the purposes of this gene disease validity framework, we are referring to those studies in which statistical analysis is used to evaluate variation in cases compared to controls. For our purposes, case control studies are classified into two types. Single variant analysis studies are those in which individual variants are evaluated for statistical enrichment in cases compared to controls. More than one variant may be analyzed, but the variants are each independently assessed with appropriate statistical correction for multiple testing. Aggregate variant analysis studies are those in which the statistical enrichment of two or more variants as a group is assessed in cases compared to controls. Points for case control studies are assigned based on the overall quality of each study and may be adjusted at the discretion of expert opinion. We have put forth a few factors to consider when evaluating case control study quality, such as variant detection methodology, power, bias confounding, and statistical significance. In addition to genetic evidence, the other major evidence type in the gene disease validity evaluation is experimental evidence. The types of experimental data in this framework are consistent with those proposed by MacArthur and colleagues in 2014 to evaluate causality of sequence variants. These categories are described in more detail in that publication and in the Gene Curation Standard Operating Procedures document, but briefly they are biochemical function, experimental protein interactions, expression, functional alteration, phenotypic rescue, and model systems. In accordance with MacArthur et al's suggestion that certain types of functional evidence should have more weight than others, we have developed the following weighting schema. Once again, we provided a recommendation on the typical number of points to assign each evidence type, as well as a range, recognizing that some pieces of evidence may be stronger or weaker than others of the same type. Though it is technically possible for one to tally a score of 8 for functional information per this schema, the number used in the actual matrix would max out at 6. This difference in scoring is to allow gene disease pairs with different types of functional information to achieve higher scores, while not weighting functional evidence higher than the other factors of the general matrix. For example, if one were assessing a disease that did not have an animal model, but had several other valid pieces of functional and gene disruption evidence, it could still achieve a high score of 6. Once all of this information has been collected and evaluated, our scoring matrix can be used to arrive at a preliminary classification. Within ClinGen, once a preliminary classification has been obtained, it is sent for review and approval by an appropriate expert reviewer. It is required that expert groups include an evidence summary to summarize gene curation evidence in the evidence summary box in the GCI. This is displayed on the website when the final clinical validity classification is published. There is suggested standardized example text to guide gene curation summaries available on our website at the URL on the slide and in the gene curation SOP. ClinGen has a number of gene curation expert panels or GSEPs consisting of clinicians, researchers, and molecular diagnosticians organized around particular disease domains, such as cardiovascular disorders, hereditary cancers, and neurodevelopmental disorders, just to name a few. GSEP members may opt to adjust the preliminary classification based on current understanding of the gene disease relationship, but must document the reason for doing so for transparency purposes. We hope this has been a useful introduction to the ClinGen gene disease validity scoring process. Please visit www.clinicalgenome.org for additional educational resources and to learn more about ClinGen initiatives. Please feel free to contact ClinGen by email at clingen at clinicalgenome.org with questions or feedback. Thank you.